Okay, FAQ number 89. Should women be in the military? Well, let's look up a couple verses here quickly. We have 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4. Another, uh, We've used this in other videos, but it's a good guide for Christian ladies. Um, we'll start at verse 3. Whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God a great price. And uh, you can't, if you're a woman in the military, you can't have a meek and quiet spirit. Uh, definitely not. Especially because if you are meek and quiet, they consider that to be antisocial personality disorder, and they will send you to a shrink evaluation. Hello, I speak from experience. <laughs> and uh, they, they will just hound you nonstop for not wanting to socialize with people. Mm -hmm. Thus define what God's word says right there. Yeah. Another scripture that you can use about the thing of women being in the military, and there are many, we can't, you know, we're, this is just a quick FAQ, uh, so we can't go over everything, but uh, First Timothy chapter 2, verse uh, 11 and 12, it says, let the, women, or let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Talking about within uh, an assembly of Christians there, within a church group. Um, but the whole concept there of a woman not usurping authority over the man. It's out of God's created order. Uh, it's just the way God has it. So we're going to see about this thing. of Again, in the military, there are many times that you can usurp authority over the man. So now we're going to get into some personal experience over here with my wife. And she will tell you uh, some things. I'll do the showing the pictures. Which one are we going to do first? Right here. Okay. Start off with my army time. This right here. As if it's not already obvious, I'm on, I'm right here, private first class at the time. And this was at my 91 Gulf Patient Administration Specialist course in Fort Sam Houston in 2003. And uh, down here. Well, just hold on there. And you can see she's outranking this guy here. Yes. Just like I was saying. This is a private, unless he got promoted to PV2, yeah. which is still below private first class. But, you know, again, it proves the thing of a woman usurping authority over the man. Right. You know. And we should point out, too, by the way, that uh, the makeup there was not her choice. It was her uh, overzealous mother. Yes. So. Um, Had to doll me up, of course, you know. Yep. Um, this down here is the four of us singing, four or five of us, I forget how many of us sang the national anthem at the start of the graduation ceremony, but I'm the tallest one in the, in the photo, so, uh, yep. kind of hard to miss there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And just to let, just to let you know, if you're thinking about, su uh, submitting to peer pressure about hairstyles and hair length. I made the mistake of thinking, if I just cut my hair off before I go to boot camp in 2003, I'll have an easier time in managing my hair and caring for it and everything. And uh, and as a result, I found out the hard way, it's actually much more difficult to take care of short hair, especially with the uniform regulations of the military, than long hair. You can just pull your hair back up rather quickly with long hair. You can't do that with short hair unless you go through a whole bottle of gel, and even then it doesn't work. But this photo right here is most of my classmates from my 91 Gulf uh, graduation ceremony that day. And um, I'm right here in the front, mm -hmm. and you can tell, um, you can see all the different insignia and whatnot if you're familiar with each of those symbols. Um, <clears throat> Right here, I'm receiving my, my certificate of completion certificate from graduation from one of the instructors. And, of course, this soldier right here is Major Wanda Wade. And, uh, again, another classic example of women outranking men. Yep. You want to show some of these certificates here quickly? Absolutely. For everyone out there who thinks I'm just making things up about places I've worked at and uh, places 
people I've worked for and what I used to be a part of. It's right here. Have to zoom out here a little bit. Come on here. This right here is my certificate of completion from boot camp. As you can see, Fort Jackson, South Carolina, fourth training brigade. You can read the rest of it. Yep. This right here is the uh, U.S. AMED Regiment certificate stating that uh, I was affiliated with the Medical Corps in the U.S. Army upon graduation of the course. There might be some parts of this that we're going to black out too, by the way, just because of personal information or whatever. Right. But This was my uh, the certificate I received during the graduation ceremony there at Fort Sam Houston, Texas. And uh, you can see the course dates if you look at it. Right here is my certificate of training, as it shows, 91 golf designation. And, um, and you can see the different subjects that were talked about there. Mm -hmm. This right here was one of my certificates from Aberdeen Proving Ground, Maryland, when I was mobbed in 2005. And uh, the Up Armored... Humvee course, M1114 course in 2005. Actually quite fun learning how to drive that thing, believe it or not. This was my certificate showing my graduation from Spook School, uh, 98 Charlie, Signals Intelligence Analyst Spook School at uh, Goodfellow Air Force Base, Texas. This, this one here, people have questioned. They say, I don't believe that. You didn't show any proof. Well, here's the proof. Mm -hmm. Right here, Federal Bureau of Investigation Training School. And if you can figure out what that signature is, that is the assistant director of the laboratory division of the FBI. Yeah. And there's the dates of attendance. She learned how to do fingerprinting and things like that. So mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't ever sneak any food or anything she can find. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But, uh, but no, but right there, you know, and, and, and let me just say it, you know, because so, I know there's going to be somebody out there that's going to be like, oh, you know, then see, she's working for the government or something. This is all past lost life, okay? She's mm -hmm. not active duty anymore. Um, I thank the Lord know, I'm not. We're showing you things to show you that, yes, she's had some pretty interesting things before she got saved. Right. So, this right here shows my... Uh, might want to zoom in just a tad bit so they can see the Lockheart, Lockheed Martin information technology of that. In the top there? Yes. Lockheed Martin information technology certificate of completion forward deployed media forensics basics basic course. And if you think anything you do online as far as account registration is secure, the privacy clause that is on every website it's an oxymoron. It's online, it's not secure. Right. It can be forensically tracked. And this shows my certificate of training, again from the APG, mm -hmm. the uh, armored carrier training. I'm gonna keep things moving along here. And then I have. Did you wanna show this picture here yet or? Yes. Okay. Let's see if I can get this thing on. This is my my class in its entirety from Fort Sam Houston, Pad to the Bone, in 2003. And uh, I right am... There. Yep, right next to the instructor. This was, yeah. He was one of the lead instructors, so that's me right there. Um, and if you would like to see my military intelligence spook insignia my class a jacket unfortunately this this uh pin fell off somehow during oh. storage so i you're guess i'm trouble. out of regulation yeah you're gonna be in trouble now <gasps> I'm, I'm gonna tell i'm reporting <gasps> you <gasps> now, which am one i gonna have to show? do kp duty now the joint yeah probably this one here yes okay this is a series of them this is the, I believe the MI core crest right here above my name tag. This is indicative of the signal core. I've 
I've been out of this field for so long, so bear with me if I'm making a mistake in, in, in saying what each of these represent anymore. And this is a unit patch to yep. show my, my unit designation with the MI Corps. And of course, I left the Army as a specialist, so, you know. Mm -hmm. Put this thing down. Um, now onto the Navy. There's your Navy coat there quick. We'll show you this real quickly. This is, I left the Navy before I applied the OS2 right ranking, but the insignia is right here. Yep. So she Operation was in the specialist. Army first and then the Navy. Yep. And here we have my deployment book of pictures. Naval Expeditionary Logistics Support Group Forward Kilo from 2009 okay. to 2010. And where are we going? And well, the first tab. Oops, it's actually right here. Okay. And uh Oh, okay. Yes, the infamous picture waiting at the at the hangar before we flew across the pond and were boots on ground in uh, mid February of, two, of 2010. Yep. Sleeping. Yes. As comfortable as I can as I can possibly try to be. And uh, this was um, Petty Officer Buchanan, Petty Officer Ball, and uh, I forget her name offhand, but me and the four and the four of us just goofing off after I was doing some IAVA, Information Assurance Vulnerability Assessment, fixes, patches, mm -hmm. updates, things like that. So we go to this one. Which one? Yep. This one here. And the infamous uh, N6 photo. I am right here. That is me. Was me. Oh, is to Kucher at the time. And uh, so we go to this next one. Okay, this one I am. Uh, yes, <laughs> you could barely see me, but this is at one of the all hands briefings at the time. You can just tell how excited I am to hear the briefing at the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, okay, and then this one right here, this is the all hands photo the entire command group picture not long after we got to the sandbox and I am right there. Right there. Yep. And so, is that it? I think so. Okay. And then there's more on the computer real quick. Alright, we have to really because hurry because we're just think, about out of time Oh, here. you know, you didn't really make OS2. You're just saying that, you know. Okay, so here's the first picture. I'm working on, I have a patches and fixes and whatnot in this photo at the transportation another one yep. talking and training one of my co-workers at the time was that over in the, iraq i actually was headquartered out of kuwait but i went to iraq for my um petty officer indoctrination course yep. for yep. second 39 class. seconds left so that's before i made second class that is my frocking letter award just another frocking ceremony photo. Me right, right there. there. Me right behind uh, the petty officer in the bottom left. That's and my one of my photos. Picture. Yep. So, and there again, kneeling in the front. Yep. So, just wanted to show there those pictures and uh, to show you that yes, she was in the military, so she does know what she's talking about. It is uh, certainly not the place for a Christian lady. And um, she's going to be doing a, a more detailed video in the future, uh, sharing some of her personal experiences in the military and comparing it to Scripture and things like that for women that are out there that have either been through the military or thinking of joining or are active in the military right now. So uh, should Christian women be in, or should women be in the military? The answer is no. Absolutely no.